Hey kids, time to do some tangents and normals when we don't have to do that uh, homework, that long homework like you were doing last night where you had to write with all different kinds of functions, you had to do that limit notation, you had to go through it, you're going to have to do it at some point, but what you hope is sometimes you get a quick problem where you just have to estimate. So that's what we're going to focus on today. No algebra today, just estimating. Um, I wanted to do this warm up with you just to review um, some things that we've learned before. So don't worry about if you're not going to, you know, you don't really have to copy this down. You can just listen. Um, if f of x is continuous with the uh, point here at 3, 3, a point at 5, 5, 5, negative 1, excuse me, and a point 6, 0, which value of f must be achieved twice? You need to think the intermediate value theorem here. Um, and you have a function that is continuous. So think to yourself, self, when x is 3, y is 3. When x is 5, y is negative 1. When f is 6, y is 0. So if you're a function and you're continuous, this function has to come down somehow and get to negative 1 and then get back up to 0. Now it can do it a variety of ways, but it has to at least connect somehow, right? So what they're asking is, since you're continuous, uh, which value of f must be achieved twice? Value of f means a y value. So here I am at a height of 3, and that's the left endpoint, but there's no guarantee that I have to hit it twice. What about a level of 1? Here I am at a one, level of 1. That's only going to guaranteed to hit the function once. How about negative one? Negative one is down here. That's also once. But what about negative a half? Since the function has to come down from a positive range value and get all the way down to negative one, you're going to hit the level of negative one half here, but then it's going to come back up to a level of zero. So you're going to hit one half again here. So must hit negative a half twice. You know, maybe more, but at least that. And then just verify that two and a half is here somewhere. And again, you only have to hit that once by the continuity. All right. So that would be uh, on the AP exam would be like a multiple choice that's easy to get if you understand that they're testing you on the IVT. Here's another way. The function f is continuous on a closed interval. Think IVT. Um, which statement must be true? Some of them may be true, but which must be true? The minimum value on this interval from 0 to 3 is negative 6. I do see the lowest value in the table is negative 6, but remember you the range values might go down from negative 4 and back up to negative 6. I'm sorry, could go further than negative 6 and back up to negative 2. So that doesn't have to be true. The max same thing, the maximum value is negative 2, so you see that the highest range value you see is negative 2, but this, uh, you could have gone from negative 2 all the way up to 0 and back down to negative 4, so that doesn't have to be true. The range values are negative for any value. Yep, the range values I've given are all negative, but must that be true? No, because I don't have the range values in between. So again, from negative 2, I could have risen up, this graph could have risen up, gone positive, and then come back down to negative 4, so that doesn't have to be true. 
So I hope D is true. There exists a domain value where C is between zero and three. Okay, so C, so a domain value between zero and three for which the function value, when I plug in that number, I have to hit negative three. Does that have to be true? So again, I say to myself, self, when X is zero, When x is 0, I'm down at negative 2. When x is 1, I'm down at negative 4. When x is 2, I'm down at negative 6. When x is 3, I'm back up at negative 2. Because you're continuous, even if I just connect this with straight lines, I had to have passed negative 3 because negative 3 is between negative 2 and negative six, the lowest range value that I have. Okay, not so bad. All right, let's get to today's lesson. And your homework is a handout. And um, Mr. Bates, I believe is their substitute and he's got this drawing tangents on the front, intro to chapter three is on the back. All right, so remember from yesterday's lesson, Oops, sorry. Remember from yesterday's lesson, we said that the instantaneous rate of change is the same thing as asking for the slope of the curve. Oops, sorry. Same thing as asking for the slope of the tangent, right? We did this yesterday. Given a function x squared plus one at x equals two, here's the graph. There was, the, there was the point two five. We did the algebra yesterday where we had to plug and chug. And we learned that we could do this algebraically and get the slope generator of two X, right? When Delta X shrinking to zero, right? We watched that point come down. And then so the tangent line went through there as Delta X went to zero, Delta X is H. And we got the slope generator of 2x after we did our algebra. Come on, where's my pen, right? We got 2x. We then plugged in the 2 and got the slope of the tangent to be 4, right? And then we, we also practiced, hey, I could have plugged in the two at the beginning. I plugged the two in here and here. My algebra would have been a little easier and I wouldn't have gotten two X, the slope generator. Instead, I would have gotten the four right away, but the slope of this tangent line is four. And then we wrote the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal. And remember the normal we said is not any line that is perpendicular to this tangent line, but it is the line that is perpendicular through the given point of tangency, right? Come on, Penn. There we go. It's been a while since I've had to use this. All right, so that's great. So, I can see it and the algebra, ew. So again, here is me getting my slope generator of 2x, right? We put in the two and we ended up getting just four instead of just instead of the 2x. But, oh, we did this one too. Oh. Right, where we reviewed that I thought that was skipping ahead. Sorry, so I didn't mean to go ahead already. Remember we said if your uh, function is in pieces, then you have to look at the slopes in pieces too. And we showed that the limit as, X appro as delta x approaches zero from the left, the limit of the slopes was negative one, which is duh. Right, we said, because this slope coming in from the left is a linear function, so it's constantly negative one. But remember we said for x cubed, the tangent line here is steep. Tangent line here is a little less steep, a little less steep, 
a little less steep, a little less steep, a little less steep. And the tangent, the slopes of the tangent lines coming into zero from the right are approaching zero. The slopes of the tangents are approaching a value of zero, a horizontal tangent. These slopes are always exactly equal to negative one. And in class, we did the math of that, right? We showed the math. We did the, we said we could plug in zero for X here and here. We could plug in zero for X here and here. Since we were just looking for slope at a point and we got negative one, duh. And we got zero, duh, approaching zero. But remember for any limit, if the left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit, the overall limit does not exist. This is a limit of tangent lines. Right, we're taking a limit of tangent lines and the limit of the slopes coming from the left is negative one. The limit of the slopes from the right is zero. Therefore, there is not a unique tangent line. No unique tangent line that I can draw at x equals zero. Because do I draw the tangent line that has a slope of negative one or do I draw the tangent line that has a slope of zero? Identity crisis. So the overall limit of the slopes of the secants does not exist. Left hand does not equal the right hand. Limit of slopes. Don't confuse this. This is slopes of the tangents. A unique tangent line does not exist. Don't confuse this with the limit of the function. The limit of the function exists, right? I'm continuous. And we know that if you're, this function is continuous. So we know if you have continuity, you just plug and plug and chug. As my domain values approach zero from the right and left, my function values are right my function values are approaching the same level that limit of the function is zero bumping bellies but when i'm talking about the limit of the slopes that's a different issue right the left hand limit of slopes does not equal the right hand limit of slopes that's a different concept those two limits do not exist, therefore a unique tangent line does not exist. All right, so that was a recap. Average versus instantaneous rate of change. Remember I told you average starts with A. A is algebra one. Instantaneous has the word tangent in it, or kind of. Tangent. Matter of fact, it has it twice, right? Instantaneous. Average rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. Average rate of change is algebra one, slope of the secant. Instantaneous is the slope of the tangent at a point. I should say here the slope of the secant between two points, right? Two points, slope of the tangent at a point. The secant line hits the curve twice in a local area. The tangent line mwah, kisses the curve just once in a local area. You do algebra one for the average rate of change and calculate the slope between two points. You do calculus and calculate the slope at a specific point. There's your algebra one formula. There's your calculus formula. The limit as delta x approaches zero of the secants is the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y over delta x. But in calculus, I told you we were going to call delta x what? H, right? Oh, hey, what is this? Wait, I don't recognize this. Ms. Getch, you didn't tell us about this. I was expecting H to pop up. Huh? Huh? Where's H? 
Never fear. There's H. So almost all of this stuff you had in your notes before, but not this formula. This one, you do want to add to your notes. That formula. I'm not happy with that color. Come on, Penn, come on. This formula is an alternative formula for the slope at a point. One particular point. This formula this formula can get me the slope generator. But shh, don't tell anybody. I can use this formula also to get the slope at a point. I just plug in a number for x first. So I want you to write this one down. I want you to have it in your notes. And I want you to say, this is how I get a slope at a particular point, just one point. I'm not going to demonstrate it yet, though. I will show you that formula, and I'll show you how to use it in class another day. I would prefer that you practice, if you're going to do the algebra, you practice with this formula, because this formula can do both. It can get you either the slope generator or the slope at a point. The slope generator, you leave, leave the x's in till the end. The slope at a point, you plug in a number for x right off the bat, OK? So I promise to get to the second one, but I do want you to have it in your notes. Also, write this down in your notes. All of these are called difference quotients. You know why? Because each one of them has a difference and a quotient. A quotient. Difference and a quotient. And remember, h is the same as x2 minus x1. Difference and a quotient. Difference, remember there's a difference in the h because it's still um, x2 minus x1. Quotient. The reason you care about this vocabulary is because sometimes AP will say, use a difference quotient too. And if they say use a difference quotient to find the average rate of change, you're using one of these. If they say use a difference quotient to find the instantaneous rate of change, you're using one of these. But you are responsible to know what difference quotient means. All right, another vocabulary word. All right, finally. We're getting to estimating the slopes from a graph. So all of that was just a kind of a recap and uh, of what we did yesterday, one new formula and another vocabulary word. So here, estimating slopes from a graph. So in your notes, maybe if you wanna draw, you know, sketch that curve, all right? No formal definition, no limit of the slope of the sequence formula. Look for the word estimate you will be tested on estimation. So here's the point. There's one point on here that's marked, clearly marked, negative 4, 0, and 1, negative 3. To estimate the slope of a tangent from a graph, you must, if they give you a graph and ask you to estimate, and they're going to give you points for estimating, you freaking draw on it. One, step one draw a tangent line. At the given point. So here they want a tangent line at negative four zero. 
draw a tangent line. It doesn't have to be super great. Use, you should use a straight edge, but you don't have to have a ruler. Use the side of your paper or the side of your book or whatever. There's my tangent line. Two. Find a nice point on your tangent line. So I think I'm going to pick that one. That one is one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, four, five. Clearly mark the second point and then say the slope of the tangent is approximately rise over run. So you were at zero, level of zero, you went up to a level of five. Five minus zero, change in x, negative three minus negative four. five over one. They did not give me any units. I do not have to give them units back. Do the same for the second point. Gee, I don't think I need any algebra, right? I don't need a second point. This is a horizontal line where the slope of the tangent is approximately what? I don't even think it's approximately. It's a line with a zero slope, right? Estimating slopes from graph. If they're going to give you points for estimating, draw the line, estimate the slope, make it obvious. I used a straight edge in the graph to count rise and run and estimate the slope of the tangent to be four. All right, so that time, so when I drew my, when I did it with the heater, I chose this point. I used a straight edge in the graph to count rise over run and estimate the slope of the tangent to be zero. All right, I didn't really count rise over run with that one, right? I can write the equation of the tangent line and the normal, right? And so can you. There's the tangent. <laughs> this time, I'm certainly not consistent with my things, right? When I did this for you, I made I had my slope as five, so my slope would be negative one over five. When I did it with the black line, I had right a slope of one, two, three, four over one. So I had four and negative one fourth. Maybe I tilted a little bit for this other, the other, next time I wrote it and I had a, th uh, a three. It doesn't matter what this slope is as long as I showed on my work how I counted it. Now let me show you how some really smart BC calculus kids in a hurry and under pressure mess this next question up. I want the tangent and the normal to this line. That's a flat line with a slope of zero, right? Its tangent is y is always negative three. Can I tell you how many smart calculus kids tell me that the normal line is undefined? No, it's not. It's right there. The normal line is not undefined. Its slope is numerically undefined, but the graph is there. And shocker, if the horizontal line is where y is always equal to negative 3, the normal line is where x is always 1. Sweet. That's it, but I did want to show you this cool little app, this cool little website. Let's see if my computer is able to handle it. 
I'm on a very old computer here at my house to do this. Let's see if it handles it. Um, and it's a cool, you can link to it. This PowerPoint is on, on uh, under file, so you can link to it as well. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's going to take forever. Come on, computer. I believe in you. I do, I do. You can do it. When we get there, what it does is just shows a really nice, it's going to show a graph and it's going to show this scenario here, but I'm going to be able to move the point of tangency so you can watch the tangent line kind of surf along the curve. But I don't know if this computer can handle it. It's a lot to ask of it to go from a PowerPoint, use a link and go to a website. So I'm going to not worry about that. I will stop it. I will let you investigate this as you like, but it's kind of a cool thing to be able to watch that tangent line go from steep to flatter to zero to negative to negative steep back to zero as you drag back and forth. It is worth a look if you want. All right. I hope you the, your homework should take you virtually no time at all. Uh, thanks for staying with me as I um, quit. As you um, as I went through some of the review from yesterday. Oh, maybe is it going to do it? It's going to do it. <laughs> you can see how long it takes, right? Come on, come on. You can do it, computer. Of course, you guys can, right? Watch, you can speed through all this, go to a 2.0 or whatever you, however you watch these things. I find that amazing. Yay, it's doing it. Look, look, look. Sweet. All right, come on, launch, launch. Ah, there we go. There we go. So this is kind of cool, right? I'm going to turn off, let's see, the red graph is the parabola. If I turn off, no, I want to turn that off. I want to turn off the purple equation. And this now is the slope of a secant, right? Can you see the slope of the secant here? Because it's two points. But I want you to look what happens as I drag the slope of the secant on top of here. That's the slope of the tangent, right? What if I go over here? There's the slope of the, there's a secant line. What if I drag this point, right? See, look, secant line, secant line. Look at that, secant line. But as I move and shrink delta x to zero, tangent line. Crazy, right? Now let me just do the tangent. See, tangent T, S for secant. Now there's only one point. See that? See the tangent line going around? Negative, zero, right? As I draw a tangent line. Notice that the tan this parabola is concave up. When you draw a tangent line, it's always on the outside of the tangency, right? I'm sorry, the concavity. What if this was X cubed? Look at that, there's X cubed, whoa there. Oh, sorry, I guess I can't change that. <laughs> it's not programmed to change it. So that's kind of cool, right? You can kind of see it surfing along. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> okay, I'm done. You're done. Thank you for hanging with me. I will uh, hope you have uh, I, a good weekend. I will check uh, the homework, the book homework that you did from Thursday's lesson and this homework. I will check that all on Monday. All right. See you, kids. Bye.